Bentley, this is your Red Bear. Let's get the camera moved over. We're gonna do this together. Uh, first time powering it up. Let me turn on the current limiter and the power supply. So, okay. Let's see what she's gonna give us, if anything at all. So we have some power amp hum. Nice classic tone trannies over here. All right, so I'm not sure if this is a pre or post uh, phase inverter setup, but We have some crummy tubes. Maybe that's what it is. If in, in either case, um, there's no uh, there's no hum in a power amp, rather. So that's nice. Let's see what she does. Let's take the gain up. I have no idea what this is doing to the mic on the iPhone, but in a room with this thing through a 412, it sounds so nice. I mean, I'm looking past the, uh, the preamp tube or service issue here, and this thing has some serious beef on the low end. This is nice. It's like a the hot rod at 800. <laughs> Strat. This is with the gain full up. Wow, this is on. This is just cracking the volume. This is just cracking the volume off of zero. Okay, pot taper into account, yeah, but my god. That, there's that microphonic uh, preamp tube or tubes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Cassie out. All right, let's get inside of this Red Bear. Some pretty recent JJ's in there. Your power tubes look pretty good. That's nice. That's always nice. Look at his tube shields. How cool is that? Nice. Oh, I think it was more proximity to the amp than uh, than the condition of the tubes itself when I turned my guitar in the other direction, the microphonics kind of went away. Or I wonder if this thing has a hardwired bright cap. That'll do it. Let's check it out. <laughs> I love the Russians. This was manufactured in St. Petersburg for Gibson guitars. Good Lord, is that the doghouse? Look at that. Nice to see some Phillips heads on there. You're not gonna believe what's in here. So it looks like the doghouse was removed and the tech uh, whipped, up a, whipped up a nice little board for the filters. Use some FR4, and some nice turrets. And look at those 5408s when those um, 4007s just won't do. There's your, uh, the little bias supply. I might change that guy out. Dude, just some little touch-ups need to be done. This is, this is a quite a pleasant surprise. Wow. So the, the guy who owned this gave a damn. This is very nice. And here's your effects loop. There's the effects loop board right there. Yeah, look at that. There's that bright cap uh, hardwired on there. I bet if you take that off, your oscillations are gonna go bye-bye. And I might lift a leg of that and see if that happens. Very nice. I'm, I'm impressed. So I've got that bright cap lifted off off of the gain control, which is just to say the preamp volume. Let's see if that quells the oscillations. All right, and I'm back. I have uh, lifted the leg of that bright cap. Let's go high sensitivity. Now, bear in mind, these are single coils. Okay, if I can make it stable with this, it's stable with anything. did it. If you have a, a JCM 800 or uh, some type of derivative um, and you're getting a lot of you're getting a lot of uh, squealing and oscillations. Um, the, the tubes are all good, the whole thing. Um, lift the leg of the, the that hardwired bright cap. It, the amp will be plenty bright without that. You have a presence control. Don't put all that high end into the front end of the amp. You're asking for trouble. So having said that, um, light service, good to go. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the work of our brothers in Eastern Europe? I like these sealed pots. So, um, while I said I was very impressed prior, I am. There are just a few things I would change, such as adding um, some Keps nuts to this hardware. I just don't even know what the thread pitch is, though. And maybe changing up a few other little things, like these uh, spade lug connectors. But guess what? This thing's been running fine. So, yeah, just a light service, man. That's all you need.